Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at some news stories. There's been some things happening in Pokemon land, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to take a little bit of a look at them, including a new set, probably, and that Charizard VMAX not being quite as rare as we were originally led to believe. Although, let's be entirely clear about this. Still an extremely rare card. Let's make no bones about it. So, starting off then, there has been a trademark that has gone and been registered over in Japan. And shout out to the lovely Primal Lugia over at PokerGuardian.com for hooking us up with the news here. And essentially, two trademarks have just been registered by Game Freak, Creatures Inc. and Nintendo. And generally, when this kind of stuff happens, it's the name of a new set. And what we've essentially had trademarked are Single Strike Master and Rapid Strike Master. And how much that means to you will probably depend on how much you've played the Isle of Armor DLC. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, Urshifu is the legendary Pokemon from the Isle of Armor, and we have two different types. Single Strike style is Fighting Dark type, and Rapid Strike style is Fighting Water type. So that makes it, shall we say, extremely likely that we will be getting another one of those double sets over in Japan, where it is one set, but the cards are split into two, and half of them can only be gotten in the Single Strike Master Boosters, and half of them can only be gotten in the Rapid Strike Master Boosters. Of course, this should not really surprise anyone. We see this quite a bit. I mean, in Japan, Sword and Shield was not a set like Sword and Shield is a set over here. In Japan, you would buy a booster of Sword, or a booster of Shield. And over here, you would buy a booster of Sword and Shield. So this isn't saying that we're going to have something similar over here. There's not going to be any double set malarkey going on outside of Japan. This is something they do fairly often. I wouldn't worry about it. We're still looking at probably about 120 cards per set. What I will say is, that means it is likely this will be a slightly bigger set than usual. In Japan, generally the main sets come in somewhere around 90 to 100 cards. Whereas here, we see, you know, in the double sets, we generally see them having, you know, 100 or 60 cards each, which is 120. So we will be seeing a slightly larger set here. But yeah, a slightly larger set. Don't get too over the top, but it does mean we're likely to have a larger set. So, this larger set based around Urshifu then, which incidentally should mean we get two Urshifu Vs. I would imagine, anyway. I would imagine we get two Urshifu Vs and maybe two Urshifu V Maxes. We shall see. I would imagine we'll get one as Darkness, one as Water. It would, you know, you would imagine they're going to focus on their secondary typings here. It would be, it'd be kind of boring, if I'm honest with you, if they focus more on fighting and don't get me wrong we need more fighting types fighting types are going to be great post rotation as i've talked about in a bunch of videos but i don't want two fighting type urshifu all right give me one darkness one water that will do very nicely it is likely to be an isle of armor focus set that does make perfect sense but bearing in mind we didn't really see many new pokemon in the Isle of Armor. Like we saw Galarian Slowbro, but we've already seen Galarian Slowbro V. We'll probably get another Galarian Slowbro in that particular set, but it's probably just going to be Urshifu that comes out as a new Pokemon. Having said that, there were a couple of human characters we saw in the DLC, so I don't know. Maybe the human characters will come around. Though to be fair, we did get Gigantamax Blastoise and Gigantamax Venusaur. So there is every possibility that we actually see those coming around as VMAXs in the set. And actually, the more I think about it here, the more I think that is incredibly likely. 
Now, if we follow through the release schedule as we're expecting it to be, this would make it Japan's December set, which would be Sword and Shield 5, which would mean that it would be our February set, with Darkness Ablaze, our Sword and Shield 3 coming in August, our Sword and Shield 4 will be coming in November, and then this will be our February set, so only a couple months behind Japan. And the reason for that is very simply, we know that Sword and Shield 4, which is going to be Astonishing Volt Tackle, is coming in September. Which means October will be Sword and Shield 4A. November will be nothing, because every three months Japan has main set, mini set, month off. Which means that December will be Sword and Shield 5. So... I know it's just trademarks, but actually, those just trademarks basically tell us that Sword and Shield 5 will be coming in December, will be, we know that without the trademarks, but the trademarks tell us that we're getting two sets that combine rather than one, and that they are each going to be focused around one of the styles of Urshifu, and I don't know about you, but... That's kind of cool. For what it's worth, I would expect Blastoise VMAX to be in one of them and Venusaur VMAX to be in the other. Though there's no way of knowing which. Now, the other day, I told you about these Rainbow Rare Charizard cards. And I told you that there were only going to be 600 in the world. I told you that in order to get one, you're going to have to win an equivalent of a pre-release. You get given 10 packs of the new set and you have to make a deck from it. And the winner goes home with a Rainbow Rare Charizard. And top four go home with a Full Art Charizard V. Everything I told you was true at the time. Unfortunately, or fortunately really, things have changed. And what I told you the other day is no longer true. Shout out to the lovely Antoine Boulet for providing the information here. But essentially... Over in Japan, they have increased the allocation. They've changed the distribution. They are still having the 600 tournaments in shops, although they are removing the option for last-minute registration, and you're only allowed to register for one tournament rather than four. And they are also considering extra shop tournaments, but they've also mentioned they might have to cancel some. And all of this is due to the ongoing corona business. Unfortunately, that is putting a spanner in the works for everyone. And these rules are essentially being made to try and make the best of a bad situation. Try and make things as good and as easy for everyone as they can. But there are 600 extra Charizard V Max and Charizard V that will be distributed by a lottery to people who hold a sealed tournament at home and send in their results and proof of purchase by mail. Now, what this really comes down to here is you have to buy a booster box and send in your proof of purchase. It's basically you buy a bunch of boxes and every box gives you entry into the lottery. And they're only giving out 600 Vs and 600 V Maxes in this way. It's not like Charizard V Max is suddenly becoming a super easy to get card which is just being distributed all over the place. That is not what's happening here. However, it is getting out there. There are going to be double as many. So we've got, in total now, there will be 1,200 of the V Maxes and 3,000 of the Charizard Vs because there were originally 2,400, 600 tournaments top four, add the new 600. Even though there were four times as many Vs initially, they are adding 600 of each. So, yes... There are more Charizard VMAXs going into circulation, but let's be clear, this does not mean that all of a sudden they are going to be very, very easy to get widely available cards. You know, 600 people that buy booster boxes are going to randomly win one of these new VMAXs. So yeah. I think the stuff they're doing with the shops is really, really cool. I love that they are trying to do everything they can to try and make these tournaments happen and to give everyone what they want. I mean, Antoine said, and I absolutely agree with them, that they don't really need to do this mail-in. It seems to me quite superfluous. But I kind of love that they are. I don't see any real reason they need to do the lottery. Although I suppose it is, you know, throwing a little bit of a bone to people who aren't able to get out into shops. But I love that they are doing it. And I am 100% all in favor. This sounds very, very cool.
For now, ladies and gentlemen, it's good news all around, and I am filled with what can only be described as full-on proper job excitement. But I'd like to know where you come down on it. So let me know in the comments section, would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... PTCG Radio.